the morning of day two. Day two on the river. And it's before dawn. We're on the way down to the jetty to go back out for another morning cruise. Yeah. On the Kinabatangan River. What are you hoping to see today? Elephants. Elephants? Yeah. And orangutan? Yeah, we saw two orangutans yesterday and I'm still like processing that. Like, I don't know how we got so lucky. I love orangutans. This morning we're gonna head back downstream to where we saw the orangutan yesterday and hopefully that they're more active this morning looking for some breakfast. The first thing we spotted was a tiny crocodile perched on the riverbank. but he did not like us getting too close. Continuing down the river, we came across a group of proboscis monkeys. Borneo is the only place in the world you can find proboscis monkeys in the wild. They are easily identified by the male's uniquely large nose and pot bellies. Quite strange looking monkeys. There are several groups that live along this stretch of river and they come to the riverbanks daily to eat the fruit from the trees. While these proboscis monkeys live in the trees, they never live more than 600 meters from a river and are particularly good swimmers for monkeys, allowing them to reach food that others cannot. We just got to the spot where the orangutan were in their nest, but they're still in their nest sleeping. So we're gonna carry on down river and then maybe come back up afterwards. Hopefully they'll be awake. We then spotted another larger crocodile who was equally as shy as the smaller one. Downriver, perched on a branch, was an oriental pied hornbill, one of only eight species of hornbill in Borneo. Think Zazu from The Lion King. This was his Bornean cousin. They are one of the most distinctive birds in Borneo due to their large and unique shaped beaks. I think we're going back to check if the orangutan has gotten out of the nest or not yet. I hope that's what we're going to do. This was the spot. There's the nest right there. There's the nest, yeah. They've left. So we're going to, I think he's going along the river to see if they moved along the river, but I don't think we're going to see them. It's kind of disappointing, but it is what it is. They're wild animals. I can't predict it. What did he say? It was a silver lip monkey? Or yeah, there's some silver lip monkeys there that we haven't seen before. Yeah, silver, silver lip monkey. monkey. Or silver langur. Excuse me. Silver lip monkeys. There's silver lip monkeys up there and they got, they're like a black with gray coat and then their kids are orange. Then it was time to head back to the dock for the end of the morning cruise. That was good. Saw a lot of proboscis monkeys. Saw a little a little crocodile. We got close to a hornbill actually for the first time. We sat around and waited around for a while. Unfortunately, we didn't see any orangutan today, but it is what it is, you know? That's part of the whole thing. It's they're wild animals. They're not going to be where you expect them to be. It's not like when we were at the the rehabilitation center where they have like scheduled feeding times at a specific location and they're more than likely going to be there. But we're going to keep trying. We've got two more trips today out onto the river to see if we can find them. We just had breakfast and we are heading back to the Oxbow Lake, which is where we lost the drone yesterday. Maybe we'll be able to fish it out with a net or something. But the Oxbow Lake, I think, was the best trip that we went on yesterday in terms of immersiveness and, and the sense of adventure. Hello! Hello, this is a wee boy. Good in the morning. We're back. Quick brecky and back to the boat. Where do you want to sit? Right here. Good. I'm a YouTuber, and I'm Aslan, I'm the king of the jungle. <laughs> Petrol, for engine, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> he got that one too! Oh, no, 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 no. 
Alright everyone, so this is the small river. Uh. So this small river they are connecting from the main river until go inside the lake. The water is much lower today than it was yesterday. And there's a lot more weight in the boat. So hopefully we can make it through. We're in the Amazon. We're not in the Amazon. We're in Borneo. <laughs> <laughs> the Amazon would be equally believable. Yeah, I know. This time we had eyes watching us from the trees, seeing what we were up to. Slowly from here until there, until we arrive at Jetty. After that, we will do the trekking and the jungle. To the jungle. That's where my drone is. It's <laughs> over there. <laughs> in the drink. As we were crossing the lake, three diving birds flew out in front of us, searching the lake below, looking to pounce on any fish that they might spot. I think he's going to go try to see if he can find the drone. Yeah. He has a mop with him. To feel at the bottom for it. Yeah. He told him what tree it fell on. Yeah. If he does find it, I'd just be happy to get the footage back. I think the drone is more than dead at this point. Our guide explained to us that these prickly vines used to be used as security at people's homes and their villages to put around the home and around their gardens as like a fence because if the monkeys try to get in and take all the food that's growing, prick their hand. This is another vine that our guide explained to us. It's called the Liliana vine. And in the olden days, the Bornean people, they didn't have any way of storing water or carrying water with them in the jungle. So they'd make cups out of bamboo to hold the water. And then they would cut the vine. And these vines, when you cut them, you get two different color liquids that come out. You get a red liquid and a yellow liquid. The red liquid, you can drink it and it tastes like minerals. So you, it's safe to drink, but the yellow liquid that comes out is poisonous. Oh yeah, that's a big spider. Our guide then showed us the old fashioned Bornean way of sending an SOS signal in the jungle. By hitting this particular type of tree with a fallen branch, it acted like a drum, amplifying the sound throughout the jungle so the rest of the village would be able to find the last person. I think we're ready to survive in the jungle. Good to go. <laughs> yeah, good to go. This is a millipede. He's all balled up right now. But he unballs and he's got all the legs. And he helps decompose everything on the jungle floor. It's time to go back to the boat. When we were getting ready to go and we saw there was going to be eight people total on the boat, I was like, we're in, it's not going to be as good as yesterday just because moving through the jungle with this many people, everything here should come in literally from miles away. Spot. He's going to bite you? I bite him back. <laughs> <laughs> there are leeches everywhere in the jungles of Borneo and they hang out onto the ends of branches and grasses for something to pass by that they can grab onto. Then they climb up to a good spot to bite in and drink the blood. Then me and one of the guides went out looking for my drone that I crashed yesterday into the lake. The water in this area is nine foot deep and pure muddy so you can't see through the bottom. We were feeling around with, a, with the end of a mop stick looking for it. I was not expecting him to jump into the lake looking for the drone. There's crocodiles in this lake. He found it. <laughs> we got a big stick and he put it down. It was about two meters down and he could feel it. And he jumped in where the stick, he put the stick right next to it and then jumped in and went down. 
I think it's probably a ghost. With the drone recovered, we all headed back through the small creek back to the main river. This is my favorite part of the whole thing is going through these little waterways. It feels like being somewhere we're like not not supposed to be and it feels very untouched even though we're in a very like commuted place like a lot of people come through here but it just gives you the feeling that they don't. I love these little waterways so much. The water's just really low today. Yeah, it's like a foot lower than it was yesterday. Yeah, you can see it on all the leaves, like where the water rises up to, because they have, it almost looks like ash, but it's just like the dried mud and clay. So the water gets pretty high from the looks of it. Right now, pretty low. We're on our way back to the lodge. It's time for lunch. And then we have a talk painting which I'm very excited about. It's a traditional way of painting. I thought it was Indonesian, but a lot of the, the cultures is overlapping because the areas are so close to each other. I mean, this island itself, part of it is Indonesia and part of it is Malaysia and the other part is Brunei. So it makes sense that those things belong to both cultures, but we didn't think we were gonna be able to do Batak painting. And it turns out that we are. And I'm really excited because it's something that I saw a lot of when I was living in Indonesia and it was always something that really fascinated me. And I like a good arts and crafts. Monkey. What do you want to do? I'm choosing a sample right now of what we're going to make. Oh, elephants. That looks hard. No problem. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Crocodile. Crocodile. Monkey. What do you want to make? I don't know yet. I don't know either. This is uh, still with the wax. Oh, with the wax. Oh, with the wax yeah. on it because you have to boil it off. Yeah, not yet. I'm having a hard time deciding. It's between the monkey with a reflasia or a crocodile. Crocodile's overwhelming me, but I think I could do it. It's just the details, I could do it. I'm doing a hornbill, which is one of the, the birds that we saw here on our tours. See his little horn on his bill. We chose, now we draw. All right, there you go. I'm on trick. Ah, yeah. <laughs> In Not my book. first time. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, doing this, yeah, but tracing something, no. Smart. I'm a cheater. Yeah. There's no book on the right here, so it's kind of hard. In the nest. Oh, yeah. I'm um, oh, sorry, baby. Did it first? And wait for a second. If you do it like this, then stop. Mm -hmm. you do it again. Okay. Mm. It's very much better. Yeah. 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 Alright. This is when um, we mess everything up that we uh, just drew. <laughs> <laughs> but once it cools, you just have to not put it, you just have to be patient, I think. So not your strong suit then? You gonna try? Mm. It's too cold? Yeah. Yeah, because now it's coming out thick. Too hot. Yeah. You can do like this also. 
So how you feel about that little tiny bird that you made? Yeah, okay. You want to try? Yeah. Okay. No, way too hot. Just try, just try. Like this? Yeah, just try. Make the flowers. Nice. Yeah. Good job. I'm about to ruin that little sketch that I did. This is Orion's Palan original, being auctioned for $50,000. Yeah. Yeah, how's yours looking? I'm done. You're done? Done. Oh, I'm not done yet. I have finished putting on my wax. It's right here. Very difficult. Getting the temperature right is hard. He's not making it. He's not making the cut. Mm -mm. And this guy has a very thick line going down his back. But other than that, it's not too bad. And it, most of it got all the way through. So I'm hoping that it's gonna work. Brittany is the masterpiece maker over here I'm not. making that alligator <sighs> scary alligator scary scary it's a crocodile a crocodile croc i keep saying alligator. crocodile it's our little stove top that was our practice this the masterpiece this is gonna have to continue later because we're going on another cruise the afternoon cruise for today. All right, we're getting on the boat. So there's some monkeys in the trees. There they are right here. You see the bushes over there. Kind of monkeys, I wonder. Probably the macaque. Something big in there. What do you look for when you're trying to spot the monkeys? Movement, usually. Like you see a branch move or something like that. And you'll see the monkey is jumping between branches or moving or picking berries or something. If they sit really still, it's hard to see them. A lot of times, unless you know where they are. Longer exciting you? No, I want to see an orangutan. I see a monkey everywhere. Yeah. Busy day on the river today. A lot of boats out. Yeah, it's busy today. We're almost getting up to where the orangutan nest was. But they might have moved on. They might have moved on. If I was at my wood, I wouldn't want everyone looking at me while I'm sleeping. No. Eagle though. Oh yeah, pretty eagle. Circling. Looking for food. Oh yeah, look. I've heard about these out in Borneo and other places that are kind of built up, but they want to connect the jungles to maximize the amount of space and make it easier for the wildlife to cross, particularly like the monkeys, the orangutans, things like that. Is they they attach ropes, so they make them like a go, almost like a rope bridge. That it is a rope bridge for the monkeys and orangutans and other things up in the tree, so they can cross easier without having to swim in the water. Hibiscus monkey in the tree. We're looking at the proboscis monkeys, and there's two types of groups. The first one is a heron group, and it's one big alpha male and like 10, 15 females. The other one is all bachelors. And the bachelor group is harder to find. There's You don't see them as much usually. They're deeper in the forest. So this is the bachelor group we're looking at right now in the big tree. It's the first group of bachelors that we've seen. Little baby proboscis monkeys are in the tree up there. There's a big alpha he's male. He's king. He's the king of the, he's the king of this group. The alpha male. Yeah. 
Big belly, yeah. Big belly, big nose. Getting quite the angle of him. Quite the angle. Yeah. Oops. It might jump onto the boat. Oh yeah, look at the baby right there. Right in front, right in front. There's one right here. Yeah, there's Hello. a lot of them. Bush mechanic. Some troubles? Again. <laughs> yeah. Again. Yeah. Don't drop it in the water. <laughs> See you tomorrow. One right above your head there. Yeah, just look up. Valerie, look out. Yeah. <laughs> the boat broke down. <laughs> Again. Again. So now we're just stuck here with the monkeys. Yeah. Which could be good and it could be really bad. <laughs> we'll make it back. I'm in a rush. Right, make a lot of video, make a lot of picture, huh? I'll be going back. <laughs> oh, they're fighting. Do you almost get involved in that? Mm. They fixed it. They fixed it. Already did. Yeah, they would. I think we're headed back. We haven't gone the same way twice except once, but that was because that was where the orangutan was. So we thought we might catch it again in the morning. But other than that, we've gone in different like nooks and crannies, directions of the river every time we've been. That's good, because I've heard that a lot of tours, they just, you go out and they just take you on the same route like two or three times and like you're done. I think we did it the right way. We booked our accommodation, like an eco accommodation like by the river, and then from there we can, you can choose like a la carte like what activities you wanna do. So we've been basically doing everything. And saved like half the amount of, we spent like half the amount of money doing it that way some of these tours because they are overrace. For one of the tours I saw, for the equivalent, because it's like three nights, two days, and that's what we did. If they take you out, they take you on the river three times. From what I hear, it's the same exact route all three times. It costs like 350 US dollars to do. That's for one person. The way we did it, not nearly that much money. Oh yeah, look. I see it. Two of them. Two eagles. Yeah. We just caught two eagles perched up in the chair in, in the chair in the tree. And they were sitting there for so long and they were so close. And when the one took off, she flew right by us. It was a nice way to end the evening cruise. We're back with Arbor Talk and we're gonna finish it up. I think they're looking good. I think I did better with the wax than I thought I was gonna do. It's not perfect, but. It looks really good. You think? Yeah. Thanks, Pepe. I think so. Now was the time to apply the dyes to color the pictures we had outlined. The wax prevents the dye from spreading outside of where it's supposed to be. At least that's the idea anyways. I think they came out really well in the end. We had to leave them overnight to dry before the wax could be melted out. 
The next day we booked an additional morning tour on the river for a total of seven tours each. When we got back to the lodge it was time to settle up our bill. The private room was 824 ringgit or $173 for three nights. Breakfast each day was included in the cost of the room. The river cruises cost 80 ringgit per person each tour. Five cruises each for a total of 800 ringgit or $168. The Oxbow Lake treks were 70 ringgit per person each trip. We each did this twice for a total of 280 ringgit or $60. And we spent 210 ringgit or $44 on lunch and dinners. And finally, the Batik paintings were 130 ringgit or $27 for both of us. Our grand total for our Kinabatangan adventure was $439 for two people, which sounds like a lot, but that's only because we did so many tours. We saw other companies charging much more for less tours. Our Batik paintings. This is your one. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's so cool. Ah, oh, look at that. I did that. Yeah. I made that. Yeah. I'm good. Wow. That's cool. I like it. Wow. Thanks for watching this week on Range List. Unfortunately, that's a wrap on our adventure at the Kinabatangan River here in Borneo. But to go on more adventures with us, like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell because you're not going to want to miss a thing. See you next week.